I pulled up like our numbers for 2023. So from January to October, and that's 10 months, we've pulled in 91,400 bucks, which is 9,400 per month Yes. Okay. per house. Okay, awesome. All right, Dan and Jessica, long time no see. How the heck are you doing today? Yeah. Things are good, Russell. How about you? Oh, uh, really good. Man, it's, uh, hey, hey, so we're going to get into this a little bit more, but just for, we're going to give you everybody a little behind the scenes of what we're doing. This is a recording on a Saturday morning. Um, as entrepreneurs, we, we work seven days a week and, and I'm, I'm having a conversation with two very busy people that have an incredible family and soccer practices and hockey and all this kind of stuff. And, and the only time we could truly fit this in was Saturday morning. Isn't that true? Yeah, yep, that's true. Absolutely. So we're going to have a conversation. De- Jessica and I have been going back and forth online for a couple months now. We finally locked down a time. And, and I, I thought you, there's, you guys have a wonderful story. You guys have a wonderful story. You're, you're like, um, and don't take this the wrong way of way I'm going to frame this. You're a extraordinary, typical couple of people that I work with. Now, you're extraordinary in the results you produce and the extraordinary with uh, the effort you put in. But you are typical. Your story is very typical to a lot of people that would listen to this. You're a young, young couple, young kids. You're starting a real estate portfolio. You're trying a little side hustle business at the same time. Got full time jobs, all that kind of things. You're you're very. Your story is very typical to a lot of people that listen to this. But you are extremely extraordinary in the work and the investment and the things that you guys do. So with that as a backdrop. <laughs> What I wanted to share. So, what have you guys been up to? What have you been busy? What's what's going on in your world right now? Yeah. Well, first of all, Russ, uh, thanks. That was very generous thing to say. We really appreciate that. And same back at you. You know, we've been following you on uh, uh, podcasts, and we actually um, worked with you for a while there on coaching, and it's been really, really great for us. And we really helpful. We owe a lot to you. So, thank you very much. Oh, I'm um, grateful. But yeah, honored, just, honored to help. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> for us, we. You know, we've just been really busy. We have, like you said, two young kids. So that's that's always our main priority and putting that in. And then on that sense, we try to be uh, role models for them, right? So we're we're focused on showing them different options to earn an income, how to run a business. Um, we're very upfront with our kids and uh, we just want them to have the knowledge as they grow. Yeah. So we've, we've started building um, a real estate portfolio. It started out with long-term rentals, um, started out with suited houses, a half duplex. And now we're, we're mostly, well, we're fully in suited houses, just having that double income in them. Mm-hmm. And we've switched from long-term rentals into short-term. So we're currently have four doors on the Airbnb platform. And then a couple long-term rental as well. Wow. So you guys are, if I, if my sixth grade Saskatchewan math comes through your you're sitting on three suited homes, six units. Is that is that the number? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, three suited homes, six units. Four of them are short term. Two of them are on a long term platform. Correct. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. What uh, what market you guys in? In Lesbridge. We're in Lesbridge, Alberta. All all of them are. Um, we've started looking outside. Like Calgary and Edmonton are pretty hot too. So. We've started kind of browsing in that area to see if there's any opportunities, but uh, all of our properties are in Lethbridge. On the west side of Lethbridge, so kind of newer newer areas and yep. well-developed. Yeah. Well, here's the thing is, it's it's funny how, um, okay, just so let me back up. Uh, I have a, a national, international audience that will be listening to this, so hopefully you're not nervous. Uh, <laughs> I, because I am. <laughs> Every time I do one of these things. Um for for people that might not be familiar with the the city of Lethbridge, where where's that at? Give me give us some little details in the background about Lethbridge. So we are about two hours south of Calgary, um, which is again a couple hours south of Edmonton, which is the capital of Alberta in Canada. Um, Lethbridge has roughly about a hundred thousand people, so not super big, but still big enough. So I think we're the fourth biggest city now in yeah. Lethbridge or in Alberta. So. That's kind of where we are on the map. Yep. You're the fourth biggest city in Lethbridge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're making me nervous now. No, no, I'm just sitting there going, that would be a joke that I would tell. That would be something like, that would be like my joke. That would be great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got the first one. <laughs> um, awesome. So, so here's, uh, 
so where what are you finding? Where um, you know, it's funny you were talking about potentially looking at other areas and you know, and I I'm not as familiar with Lethbridge, obviously, as you are. And and I'll just give you a little bit of a background perspective. I have some clients from Vancouver, Vancouver Island, across the country, and they're looking into those southern Alberta areas, the the Lethbridge, mm-hmm. the Medicine Hats, the Brooks, the all those areas like that. And they're just finding incredible opportunities. What what's making you want to potentially look at other areas is uh, what's going on in Lethbridge that uh, that we should all be aware of. Well, Lethbridge is really good, and it's it's funny you say that because currently too we usually have somebody in our airbnbs that is from bc or the (laughs) the east coast that is actually staying in our airbnb to view lethbridge as a potential to move here um yeah lots of those we've ran into that quite a bit and you know they're able to sell their house over there take a large gain and they can pay cash for something i think the average house price here is about 425 now so which compared to, you know, the rest of Canada is so low. So I think that's attracting a lot of potential buyers. Yeah. And we just had actually in our in our primary residence, our neighbors just moved in and they're from Toronto too. So they just said the same thing. Like, yeah, we came to Lethbridge because the value was really good. And to go back to your original question though, Lethbridge is a fantastic place um, for real estate, but we've run into some zoning issues that some of the larger cities have different mm-hmm. perspectives on. So For example, Lethbridge, you're only allowed to have two suites on that one primary residence. So like if you built a fourplex, for example, you're not allowed to just go ahead and put um, suites in the basement of those. Um, Or if you had a suited house and you wanted to build a garage and put another suite atop of that garage, Lethbridge won't quite allow you to do that yet. We're not quite there yet. I think it's coming down the pipeline, but we're not there. So for example, Calgary and Edmonton, you have more options for that and and the more the more um money you have per unit on a house the better your cash flow is going to be yeah now now just as a as a course of action for you i'm going to i'm going to use the word um it, it's not allowing you yet now yes. Yes. and when i say that um edmonton and calgary didn't allow those things until just recently too and and the the i believe the bylaw one of the bylaws just changed in edmonton a year ago which now allows us to put house suite, garage suite on one property. So one of the things, and just something for you guys to, to think about, if you can get a big enough piece of land, let's say you get a 50 by 150 lot, right? One of the things we're doing up in Edmonton is we're taking 150 by, a 50 by 150 lot, we're subdividing it. Now we have two lots. Yeah. Now we can put side-by-side duplex with suites, two garage suites. We now have six units on it. Exactly. Now in Lethbridge, I can pretty well guarantee if you're allowed to do a house and suite, you could take one large lot, 50 by 150, subdivide it, and you'd probably be able to put two houses with suites. You get a fourplex quite yeah. easily, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And we just have to check our zoning here, but I'm sure you definitely could. And we're generally just a little bit behind, you know, those bigger centers like Calgary and Edmonton. So Personally, I feel like what's happening there in time will start happening here. And and it's and gang, it and you know, if you're if you're not investing in these markets and stuff like that, it's okay. Just just be vigilant and be prepared that some of these changes are going to come to your market too. And just be aware for those opportunities. Um and, and I one hundred percent echo it's it's crazy what you can get in Alberta compared to many markets. I was funny, I sent a listing off to my wife yesterday. And uh, not that we're moving, I, you know, however, I would love to move into this house. I go, look what you can get for like a little over a million dollars. And I think this was just outside of Calgary. You, you literally would get an acreage on there. And the house was almost probably, it was probably like 5,000, almost 6,000 square feet. It had a golf simulator in the basement. The entire backyard was a, was a putting green and all this kind of stuff. And it, w- and it was just like a spectacular home. And it was just over a million dollars. Now, yeah. where I live, and I'm not trying to make this any flex in any way, shape, or form, down the road, they're building townhomes, three, four-bedroom townhomes that are a million dollars. So mm-hmm. do you want to get a townhome and live in a townhome community, or do you want to get an acreage with a golf simulator in the basement, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> a golf simulator sounds pretty good. Yeah. So, so it, it's, it's amazing what you can get. And, and, and here's the thing, and I, I, I chuckle, and you're... Just in there go, well, our, our average house price now is now 450000 Oh, it's so expensive. To, to people in Lethbridge, it is so expensive. To everywhere yeah. else in the country, it's like a dream. It's a steal. Yeah. yeah. 
And uh, it's funny you say that too, because when you speak with people in Lethbridge, that's always the common thing, right? Like, oh, I don't want to buy a, a rental property now because it's too expensive. It's always too expensive. Even when we look back when we started, I remember we looked at a, a suited place and I was like, ah, I don't know, like it's too expensive at the time. And now it's worth like, you know, <laughs> so much more. <laughs> gone up 40% in value and be like, oh yeah, that would have been a, yep. a smart buy. <laughs> yeah. And I would imagine your guys' rental market is extremely tight too. What's what's the rental market like in Lethbridge right now? Yeah, it it is very tight. Um, we actually just had to redo lease signings mm-hmm. on our up down basement suite for both units. And it was very easy to rent. We we put the the rent up um and it almost rented fast enough that you you kind of wonder if like you should have gone a little bit higher for it. But uh lots of applicants and lots of good quality applicants, which Just is huge. really nice. So we've had in the past you can you can get lots, but a lot of them, you know, they don't meet your kind of standards or what you're looking for. They don't qualify for it. Um, but this time around, everyone qualified. People are interested right o- right away, and it didn't take any any time to get them rented out. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's funny. I was um, just doing it was lease renewal time on a couple of my places in Leduc, and the property manager sent me a note back and said, "Okay, here's what we're recommending." I go, "Let me just go check on rent faster to just check on rentals in Leduc." It's been it's been maybe a couple months or so. And I'm sitting there and I punched in and 11 listings came up. I go, oh, okay, something's wrong. I must have had a filter. I must have a filter on it. There was 11 listings in the entire city. Like, yeah. In the entire city. And I thought I had, honestly, I thought I had filtered it just down to something different, right? But I go, there's only 11 places for rent in the entire town. We're going higher. Sorry to say this. Definitely. For, for your potential tenants, but good for you. Right? Well, yeah. however, and, I, and you say it, I, I, on one hand, we say that, but at the same time, they're renting a, a three bedroom, like a brand new three bedroom, three bath house, and they're paying in the mid to low 2000s. That same rental in Vancouver or Toronto or most places in the country is is pushing four thousand or more, which is wild. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's still one of the most affordable, even though we think it's gone up and it's high. It's still an extremely affordable place. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now so you guys have long term and short term rentals. Do you have a favorite? Is it picking like a favorite child or which one do you like better? Honestly, I I really enjoy Airbnb. Um, I would say that is my favorite. You're much more involved uh at the beginning of it i'd say it was a it was a bad like a bad thing compared to long term but once you figure out how to operate it and you know how to put the systems in place and automation is everything it's every guest is almost always the same so you learn the routines you know what they're looking for you simplify everything Mm -hmm. and you're a lot more involved in the property and one of my favorite things about it is we actually just had our our two year anniversary on one of them in September. And we did, we went in after, after a guest, we go back in and the unit looks exactly the same as it did two years ago, which is a huge difference from long-term. Cause when we did our, our long-term turnover after two years, three, three years, the place needs quite a bit of work. Like you got to fix dings in the wall. You got to do paint. The plumbing's leaking. This doesn't work. The dishwasher has been doing something, you know, so there was. You're just kind of a lot more in the loop with Airbnb. You know what's going on. You, things get brought up. You can deal with it right away. It gets cleaned, you know, all the time on a regular basis, which is huge because not all, you know, long-term tenants tend to do that. So. Yep. Yeah. And you're running a business too, right? So we support like a local cleaner. We give her lots of work. Um, some handyman. Luckily, I'm in the trade. So like I can fix a lot of that stuff on my own, which is good. I mean, it does require work. Um, if you don't want to put the work in, then I I wouldn't recommend doing that, or I'd recommend like a property manager for it. But uh yeah, yeah I I really enjoy the Airbnb side of things. It's the the honey the honeydew handyman service, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, okay. All of it goes to the rentals and kind of laps on your own house. No, I, <laughs> yeah, I've I don't know how many times I've had the joke about my wife will sit there going, "We're putting another dishwasher into another tenant place." What what yeah. about what about when are we getting a new dishwasher? Yeah. <laughs> I go, well, isn't that the, that's the life of a life of a rental housing provider, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. 
All right. So, so there's a lot to unpack there that we can go into. Um, what is a, and I'm just going to say this based upon, you know, we just had an announcement out in BC and lower mainland of BC that, uh, that they're cracking down on short-term renters. They're cracking down on things. They, they hired 10 Airbnb police to sit there and just literally go over all the listings and send invoices to people for, I think it's $3,000 a day up to $100,000 in fines. And I just had a client of mine in, on the island, Vancouver Island, that just uh, received an $18,000 bill with, uh, on this kind of stuff. So what's the, what's the appetite like in Lethbridge for short-term rentals at the moment? So on that note, we don't have registrations like that. So mm -hmm. I've contacted the city of Lethbridge, obviously asked if you needed to be registered as a business to operate it. We are not there yet. A keyword again is, is yet, because maybe that's coming down the pipeline. Um, it seems like a lot of places are starting to enforce that. So it's something that we are aware of that that might be coming down and that might just mean us going in and trying to to get registered, get a business license for that and be some of the first ones in there because BC and all that, they they do allow those Airbnbs. You just have to be registered. You have to be in a proper unit for it. So that would be that would be the biggest thing. If you're meeting all your registration yeah. requirements, hopefully it shouldn't be an issue. Well, one of the changes they made in BC was it ha it has to be in a house that you currently live in. You can't have it in an exterior home or you can't be subletting it. You can't be any of that. But as far as I know, I'm not, I'm not in that space, but it was just been a, quite a shockwave out here. Now, I, I would imagine one of the reasons why it's not an issue out there is because it's not that big. I would imagine there's not a lot of Airbnb listings in Lethbridge and it's not a problem. The reason why it's a problem out in Ontario and, and BC is because the landlord and tenant laws are so terrible. Everybody pulls their rental units off the market and they do it Airbnb so they don't have to run through the tribunal system of things, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah I could see that. And then it, it hurts their rental market, right? So it makes it even harder for people to get in. Mm -hmm. Yep. So what kind of what kind of clientele would uh, come out to Lethbridge to rent an Airbnb? Is it a touristy place? Is it a place that oh, yeah. people work? What, what kind of people are you renting to? We have lots of sun, lots of wind. So people it's really come a nice there place to be. For that. Uh -huh. no, lots of business people um, come for work and um, lots of families come. It's, we're a university and college town. So lots of people come to visit their kids in school and um yeah, lots of business people though. For yeah, the most part. so we're we're not like a vacation market for Airbnb, obviously, right? We'd be considered like a metro area. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a large city, but lots of people visit Lethbridge, and even you look at how many hotels we have in Lethbridge per capita is is quite high for a city. So that means there's lots of people traveling through, mm -hmm. and the largest thing is is work that we've noticed. There's lots of projects. So we have solar farms going yeah. on outside of the town. Um, we've been consistently renting to people that have been working on the solar farms for two years well, now. Yeah. Um, we have a McCain's edition going on. That's about a three to four year project, I think, That's and big. we. We actually just did a direct booking with someone who stayed in there. So he's going to do, it's a direct booking. So we're outside of the platform and we're doing a, a monthly furnished unit for him. So he can, he has a place to stay while he's working at McCain's. Um, as it's Jess alluded to, to, there's Thanks. parents that come down to see their kids in school. Obviously their kids are staying in a dorm or a, a small rental. They don't have the space to host mom and dad. So we get lots of people that are like, Hey, we just want to come down, spend the long weekend. Uh, we need our own space or this or that. Or if people have, you know, a brand new baby, mom and dad want to come down, but they want to give them space. So they stay with us. They go in that area. And then another thing too that we've noticed is lots of practicum students. Mm -hmm. So lots of, um, you know, nurses and people doing their practicums and master's degrees and things like that at the college and university. They'll come and they'll need, you know, kind of that three month long term in a short-term rental. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you're, you're renting. That, that midterm rental is, you know, that's good. That's like your gravy right yeah. there. So those are always nice to get. Yeah. So, so it's, it's, you're doing it the old fashioned way as economic activity and work and jobs. You're not relying on a, you're not having to be a, an up and down seasonal vacation kind of a place. You're actually 
you got some amazing economic activity cooking and there's just not enough places for people to 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 stay when they come through town like that's that's an indication of the economic activity in the area yeah, yeah. And actually, um, one other thing I was going to mention is we get people too who, you know, maybe can't qualify to have their home, um, stay in their home while they're building another house. So we get lots of people who are moving, um, but need somewhere short term to stay with their family until their new house is ready. On that note too, we've actually noticed there's been a upward swing of like first time Airbnbers that message you and be like, Hey, you know, we normally stay in, in hotels, but we want to try Airbnb out yeah. for a little bit. And then they always have great things to say, especially young families, right? Because well, we've traveled with young kids and staying in a hotel is it's hard. <laughs> is hard compared to a, an Airbnb, right? Where you get a separate kids room, a separate living room, the kitchen, uh, kitchen, you can prep all that stuff at home. We've just noticed, yeah, we've noticed good things with it. Nice. That's awesome. Now, so you've, well, here's the good news is you've, you've kind of have kept your yeah, if you will, you've kept your toe in both ponds, if you will. You have a long-term yeah. tenant and you also have a short-term tenant and you can pivot either way, I would imagine. Um, it's if, if, if the regulations and change so dramatically, you would probably pivot to the long term. And in the meantime, if there's more demand for the short term, probably on their next tenant move out, you might consider, well, let's put this on a short term for the next little six months to a year. And let's see. Yeah, there is a question here. So here's the question is what kind of differential and what kind of Delta and premium are you getting for your short term versus your long terms? Uh, The, the, we didn't, we, I make the joke every time I talk to somebody in Alberta and Southern Alberta, if they have internet challenges is that they because there's so many people moving into the into the province that there's not enough internet pipeline if you will <laughs> maybe could be yeah so um the question was about um your um differential and premium you're getting short term versus your long term tenants for um our monthly price is that yeah, what you on mean? a monthly basis give or take yeah so i actually wrote out a couple of numbers here now it also depends airbnb can be very dynamic right so like mm-hmm. as your occupancy fills up you're going to raise your pricing um and then as occupancy is maybe lower, you're going to lower your pricing. So it it does stagger quite a bit, whereas long-term rent is like Thanks. one year lease, year here. But um, I pulled up like our numbers for 2023. So from January to October, um, that's 10 months, we've pulled in uh, 91400 bucks around, which is about 9400 per month. Per, then- per suited house, per house? Yes. Okay. Per house. Okay. Awesome. And then you break that, you would break that down in up and down too, right? Because there's, there'd be the two units per house. So in that, to clarify, our one property is Airbnb and it's an Airbnb up and it's an Airbnb down on a legal. Okay. So that, that's just to clarify that. So that would be two houses, which would give us those four doors. So then in that, we have two different styles of houses. Um, one of them, I would classify it as your your higher not a not a starter house but a higher end house so we have you know a double front attached garage it's split down the middle so each suite gets access to the garage it's got a back deck large backyard uh corner lot in a nice new area the house is only 3 years 3 years old 4 years old yeah 3 I think yeah so that one that one from this year January to October has averaged about $5,000 per month for income. Okay. Um, And then you compare that to long-term rental. So when I last checked long-term rental, I called a a management company in town and they estimated about $1,900 up for a three bedroom and about $1,500 down. So that would give you $3,400 a month. Right. That one. So the difference there is about fifteen hundred bucks, give or take a little bit, and depending on the the time. So you're getting a about a thirty percent premium on the gross revenue side of things, just on really rough yes. numbers. Yeah, and I would probably I would subtract a little bit on that too because we do have extra fees, right? Like there's there's a lot more to the bookkeeping on Airbnb because you do supply some consumables, you yep. have some cleanings, you have all that, but. Um, mm-hmm. I have much, much better breakdowns on spreadsheets for what all that costs, but I won't kind of run into all the boring numbers. For oh, that stuff. I know you're the spreadsheet guy, Dan. 
Uh, sometimes, <laughs> honestly, it got to be a lot with the Airbnb. So I actually um, hired a, an accountant and someone to run it on QuickBooks for me because it freed up a ton of my time. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's yeah. another conversation we're about to get into is how do you fit all this stuff in at the same time? But but uh, but just unpacking this a little bit more. So so let's just say there's a little bit more consumables and stuff. So let's take off. So you're, you're better part of over 20%, a 20% premium over th- yeah. for the past 10 months. And that's a good term of window. And I would imagine that's probably going to continue forward as well. So there is a premium to, to doing that. Now, is yeah. there other costs? Like for example, in your long-term rentals, does the tenants pay for utilities? No. Okay. So you have your utility. So tenants are getting $1,900 for rent, including utilities. Yeah. Right now. And that, that's probably gone up in the last little while. Cause when I checked that rust, that was probably seven months ago. Yeah. So I know rent has gone up since then. Yeah. They've gone up quite a well. And I'm just, I'm not familiar with Lethbridge, but that's ridiculous to be honest. Cause my utility yeah. allowances, I, I, I build utilities in as well. And I'm charging for a suited house. I'm charging $600 a month now for, for utilities, 350 up to 50 down. Uh, yes. oh, yeah. on on top of their rent. So the rent is in let's call it 2000 or 1900. Let's go 1900 plus 350 for mm-hmm. on top of that. So yeah. So affordables are ext- extremely uh, uh, rentals are extremely affordable still out in southern Alberta there. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so- and actually Lethbridge was just uh marked as one of the most affordable cities in in alberta mm-hmm. for rent. yeah if you if you just go across that rental housing i think it's rentals.ca if you go across there all the ones in green and all the ones at the bottom of the list for affordable places are pretty much all alberta's but they're in green and yeah. they're going up like significantly yeah. going yeah. up okay so so you are doing well with your short terms at the moment yeah and nothing's telling you that nothing on the horizon that you can see at the moment is going to stop slow that down that i see how do you uh some of the things when people talk about short-term rentals and airbnbs and vrbos they talk about all how much time it takes to do all this kind of stuff are you guys how do you guys fit all this stuff in the extra management time stuff like that how do you guys fit all this in we um we automate a lot of our systems so we use um a platform called hospitable and it lets us automate, you know, our check-in instructions and our guest messaging. Um, and it's really user-friendly. It's really easy. It's freed up a ton of our time. Mm-hmm. Um, that's probably the number one thing that we've um, implemented to really help free up some of our time. Um, otherwise, you know, it's just kind of that consistent, basically the same questions over and over. So you get pretty good at answering them. <laughs> yeah. And on that note too, like, everyone's kind of afraid of it, right? It's the fear of the unknown, uh, making a large shift like that. So yeah. even even for us, it was it was very intimidating to jump over to it because you're like, oh man, I don't know. Like, what about all these parties that you hear about? Yeah. People <laughs> wrecking it. Uh, I don't know if, if I'm ready for something like that. And then the work is really front-end loaded just with yeah. a lot of stuff. So if you put the effort in to free yourself up and you treat it like a business, you can, you can automate a lot of it and you can free up your time. If you just kind of go about it willy nilly and don't create these systems, it's going to consume a lot, a of, lot your of your time and a lot of your life. But every along the way, we treat it like um, a growing opportunity. So we're always trying to learn new ways. We don't think I know we don't have the best way of operating. There's always better options. There's new products coming out. So but we, we have just, a good way. Yeah, we try to follow that and we just start to implement it. Um, and as you go, you kind of learn these tricks or you start to follow people that are doing it and you pick up these small things that are like, oh man, that would save me a ton of time. And to give you a direct example of that is I had these um, digital key locks, right? So on four units, mm-hmm. we put them in digital key locks. Well, when you have, you know, five people checking in and out per month per unit, that's a lot of people coming. That's a lot of door codes to change, right? So we really put some effort in, found smart locks that you can monitor from your phone. You can change it from your phone. And now they even interlock with this hospitable app that Jess is talking about. It can auto-generate key codes and you put in your smart tags for it and it auto sends out check-in messages. It automatically changes your codes. So there's millions of ways 
to free your stuff up. It's it's a large business and there's lots of money that's been invested into, you know, self-management for this. Oh wow. So 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 gang, just as an FYI, we're we're here with Dan and Jessica Chisholm. And we're just they're just bringing the fire here today, guys. It's getting hot. You know, I know it's in it's getting late in the season and you know, fire happens. Bombs get set off. Or something. There are bombs in in a in a good way, not in one of those bad way bombs, right? Um so yeah. just so I got that hospitable, is that the app name? Yep. And you can do a lot of and I would imagine for those in, in in the Airbnb world, they're probably oh yeah, hospitable. That's just an, a, a tool that you use. Like I, I don't yeah. operate in that in that space at the it's moment. Well known, I would think. Yeah, it's yeah. a channel manager, so you can run a lot of stuff out of it. You can control your team out of it. It yep. it controls your cleaner too. So yep. like if you get a booking, it'll automatically schedule cleaning, send the the cleaner a notification like, hey, this date needs a cleaning for this unit. She puts it in her calendar. Um, it's really you, nice. Yeah, really convenient. You just got to be on top of that stuff. Because again, cleaning's huge with Airbnb, right? So you have to have a good cleaner. You have to work directly with the cleaner because they're kind of your eyes on the inside. They check everything. We're trying to stay as far back from it as possible yeah. and just rely on those people that go into that unit to let us know. And you train them too. So like, hey, if a light bulb's out, can you please change it? Or if you notice the windows are dirty on the outside, let's schedule a time to clean it. Or if carpets need to be shampooed, we're relying on you to kind of show some incentive and book this stuff. Yeah. And that's in. one of the things that I know when I have conversations with people that um, are in the short term space is you have more eyes and ears on the place and, and you're never more in the way than, than a, a week or two away from any maintenance requests. Like there, there will be no leaks. There will be no you know, slow drips, there will be no, you know, linoleum that peels up. And I know you guys have higher end than linoleum, but I know just, you just have eyes and ears on it all the time. So, yeah. Oh, that's yeah, awesome. You don't, want the, you don't want a guest to go in and something's wrong, right? Like you'll, you'll hear about it yeah. right away or worse, it would show up in a review or something. So. Which we've got right now, we have about 303 reviews and we're kind of averaging, um, you know, that 4.98 out of five. So, oh, and I yeah. know you're taking that personal, aren't you, there, Jessica? <laughs> very, very <laughs> yeah, yeah. You you have some of the most um, on point things that I know when we were working together. Everything from the notes that you took to the the the, the journal that you kept to the pen that you would use to all the things. Yeah. You're, you're you're very on point. Like it is just like it's 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 actually quite impressive on how um on brand how po on point and how, your your eye for design is like like second to none. To be honest, you. you 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 need to take that a next level, to be honest. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, Jess has done a really good job. She's um, done the interior design for all the units too, which has been really good and really um, so really helpful. It's simple yeah. though. That's the thing, right? Yeah. So so really. <laughs> so Jessica, do you give Dan a, a a permission note when he goes to the to the to the Home Depot to pick out a paint color or something? You have to give him a permission note. Yes, very to a T, exactly what needs to be done. <laughs> Russell, I would never go do that on my own. I know, I know. <laughs> you know, you know your lane, and that's exactly the same way I am with with the, with my wife. It's like, yeah, it's white. No, that's Oxford. That's Oxford <laughs> yeah. white. There's like 27 different whites. You idiot. Right? Yeah. <laughs> that's oh. cloud covered white. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's nine zero two seven one eight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, we know our lanes are our lanes are more for for knocking things down and and, and, yeah. and our our lanes are more for destroying things and then we have our yeah. significant others to come and fix things for us. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, what other things that you do um in order to to make your life that you know? See, you both have big giant smiles on your face, and you're both you know here and. And most people look at short-term rentals and they just like pull their hair out because it's just time consuming. Like what other things you guys do if you, you maybe offer a tip or two for somebody maybe considering doing short-term rentals? Um, there's lots, honestly, the cleaner, like I said before, that's going to be your first thing. If you don't have a cleaner set up, like you, you're not, you're not ready for it. Um, that's probably one of the most important things is finding a cleaner that's, you know, you can trust that you can rely on. Um, and also having a backup cleaner. I was, I was about to ask, is a cleaner or a team of cleaners in potential? Yeah, you need yeah. to have a backup. I would I would reach out to someone who's done it um, personally. Like 
We're pretty open with stuff like that. We like to share all the little tips and tricks that we've done. I would reach out. And even like, I know Jess has posted a couple of things about like some of the, the starter stuff that you need to do um, to get going. Mm-hmm. And it's going to come to a point where you're, you're going to have to make that jump. You can sit here. If you, if you want to do it, then you're just, you're going to have to do it, right? Like you're going to have You'll to learn along the way. <laughs> yeah. And that's experience is the best teacher. Um, but don't just do it without knowing what you're getting into. Sorry, on that note, we actually have a couch that's being delivered for <laughs> one of our units. Yeah, um, it's probably them. <laughs> and that is them. We're back. Hey, hey guys, like the magic of, of editing, you know, we've we had we had the 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 couch delivery come. What kind what kind of couch did you get? Where did you get is a Wayfair? Jess probably has uh, a no. <laughs> actually we we um opted up for a higher quality top grain leather one for this unit. Uh we've just noticed like leather lasts a, a lot longer for mm-hmm. short-term rentals. So we we put our splurged. old one in there actually yeah. and now it's time for an upgrade. So So you mean the 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 rental property and the short-term rental gets the new couch and you guys get the get the <laughs> get the one brought back. <laughs> you have to reupholster the one that comes back home. <laughs> yeah, we'll take the one back here and we'll try to fix no. it up and <laughs> And we'll, uh, we'll let the kids use it for a while. Yeah. We can jump down on it. The the life of a rental housing provider. Yes. So. Yeah. Um, awesome. Okay. So we were, we were diving in uh, and I'll, we'll wrap this up in a second, but if there's any, if somebody was thinking about just wanting to get into short-term rentals and maybe they had a, a, a long-term rental, maybe they just wanted to test it. What, and I know sometimes testing is not the best way, but what, what advice would you give to somebody about just jumping in into short-term rentals? Well, right off the bat, first thing would be what we talked about earlier, check and make sure that it's allowed where Mm -hmm. you are, because you could have, that could be quite expensive right there. If they're not allowed, then don't even bother. Don't try to, don't try to avoid it. Don't try to sneak it through. Um, You have to check on that. The other thing would be um, a really good neighborhood, nice places. I would not go for anything cheap, try to save a buck on this. We just, as we alluded to the couch earlier. We used a secondhand one, didn't last very long. You need your stuff to match. You need it to look good. You need it to stand out from everything else. So you you have to invest some money on that. that. And actually a really good thing that, that we learned after the fact mm-hmm. is there there's a large upfront cost to furnishing um, your place. But what you can do is you can actually go into these places, Ashley Furniture, The Brick, they offer even in today's market, they'll offer you their credit financing and you can get 0% interest yeah. for three, five years. So now Airbnb can pay for yeah, its own furnishing. You can fund your own furnishings for that place through Airbnb, which is a really strong driver for that, especially if you're worried about upfront costs. Because to furnish a house, it's especially expensive. nicely, it, it can be quite expensive. Yeah. Well, like what, what kind of, what kind of ballpark are we talking? So give me kind of your suite at homes, kind of a, uh, and I know it, this is, it's hard to say, and it varies. And, and like in a typical accountant answer would be, a, it depends, right? But yeah. a tip, what, what kind of sizes are your main units and your lower units and just ballpark cost to furnish? Sure. Mm-hmm. So yeah. our larger one is the three bedroom. It's, what is it, 1,200 square feet up? Yeah, ish. I, I believe. Think. Oh, it's, no, it's, it's like a split level when you walk up. So you walk up and then the master bedroom is above the garage. So it would be, I think it's 1100 plus 600. So, so you're like 2000 square feet kind of upper unit type of thing. Give or take. Okay. Gotcha. It's it's a three bedroom and we, we designed one of the bedrooms to be an office because we didn't want so many people people on a, on a main floor suite just to keep noise issues down and stuff. But I think we roughly spent, that one was probably higher. I think it averaged about ten to twelve thousand is what we spent per unit to get it furnished. Again, you I'd say you, up to fifteen. Yeah, yeah, that one could have been fifteen. Um, we also, when we first did it, it's a large amount of stuff that you have to get, and then you get it all in there, and you realize you maybe forgot a couple things. You have to do this, or you got to buy you know mirrors for this wall because yeah. this wall's too big, or stuff breaks or you you don't quite have it all or people ask for different appliances um so i would say a safe bet like going higher end would be about 15,000 gotcha okay and then the lower units what size and what kind of ballpark costs 
So lower units obviously are smaller. You typically have the mechanical room down there, right? So that doesn't count. So I would say they're nine, 900 to a thousand square feet. They are two bedrooms. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, those, those by the way, those are big. That's a big lower unit though, by the way, just comparatively. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. When we purchase the houses, we actually judge a lot of it based off the lower unit because um, we look for specific things. We really like walkouts. Lots of light. Um, having a walkout gives you that lots of lots of light, you know, nine foot ceilings, you have a door. Um, so people don't feel dungeony down there. And then, you know, like a nice warm color paint on the walls, just like lightens everything up. And again, you're probably looking at, at 10, 10 to 12,000 there um, to do yep. it. And we do queen beds if we can. And then if we can fit a king, we'll always do a king. And, you know, a really nice mattress, just it's huge. People you, go there to sleep. <laughs> yeah. You get a, a couple of reviews that mention how nice the mattress is. And lots of people will look for that and be like, yeah, I want a king bed somewhere easy to sleep, nice and comfy. Well, you guys are, are, are warming my heart here. And I'm sorry, I'm just going to give you a little, a little applause here for a second. Just, all right. So you're, you're warming, you're warming my heart because you're talking all about you design it from the perspective and the experience of the tenant and the, and the person staying, and then you work your way backwards, which so many people in this one, and this is a big mistake I see people make it. And how do I know this is a mistake? Cause I made it for probably 10 years is I start with a pro forma and I start with the numbers and then I try to jam tenants into a property there. You guys start the opposite. You go, how do I want, how many light, how many windows do we have to have? What kind of lighting do we have? What kind of experience we're going to have? What kind of reviews are we going to get? And then you design the unit in the area that people want to stay. Yes. Yeah. I and think it, it's really important. It's because- been very successful that way too. And then like you, you still have to look at the numbers, obviously. Yes. Right? Like obviously you, you, at, you. at the end, but, but you have to start with the, something that people want. Yeah. Cause no one's going to stay if, if they don't like your unit. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, I had a, we had an example when we were just doing some of our new designs and some of our new properties. We started we started with design and things like that, but we went into a place we had a capacity to build up to eight units. We we could say, well, obviously we want to stick eight units on our lots and stuff like that. And then we took a look at it and go, these things would be little dungeons. Like there's one little one little you know. So then we went down. We found a seven unit build. Still would be just a little bit too small. Then we settle on a six unit because the units are bigger. We get at minimum three, three windows on our lower suite. Minimum. I've seen places that, that have only one, like, cause you have to have one in the bedroom, obviously. Yeah. Um, yeah. We build two bedrooms or one bedroom plus dance that each have windows. And then there's plus a big giant window at the front. We're over, over top of that. So you get light from all, all, all areas almost. It is so important. Well, it is because you're you're forever going to be just you'll be you'll be sitting there going, well, why am I vacant and why are people not wanting to come back or why why are we getting terrible reviews and people that stay in short term rentals like this is you know it's just a reality is people are very judgy judgy when they stay in short terms. Absolutely, yeah, they can be for sure. And the whole Airbnb it's ran off reviews right from a host to a guest. They're very very important to the success. Yeah. But- um, another thing too that that hospitable does is we can um, generate reviews in there as well, and they'll send out automatically, which has been a huge time saver for us too. Yep. Well, I would imagine we could probably just go into this whole realm of just your systems and your procedures and your policies of everything on short-term rentals. Uh, we could probably just do that, and maybe we'll have to book another call and and do something like that. Maybe maybe I see a. Uh, a short-term rental training program in the future for somebody to maybe be able with their, all their uh, marketing skills can probably promote that or something. Does anyone know anybody yeah. like that? Yeah, I think we, <laughs> we do actually, you know, and that's funny because we've been in the talks about um, creating some of that stuff because yeah. when we first started, that would have been super so handy. Yeah. <laughs> handy to have, yeah. Well, now I think by our fourth one, we're, we're, I wouldn't say we're professionals at it, but we definitely know a lot more now than we did at yeah. one. <laughs> well, we're never going to be professionals at anything, to be honest. And there's something genuine about people that are doing it as opposed to people that are just talking about it. There's an awful lot of talkers out there yeah. in the moment. Very few are actually doing. And there's just something refreshing about somebody who's in it day to day, living it day to day. And oh, by the way, this is what I learned last week, as opposed to somebody pontificating 
a theory of what I read from somewhere, some Facebook group or something, right? One of the most important things I've learned in some of my marketing um, uh, ventures that I've done is, you know, learn, do, teach. It, no one's going to want to um, to stay with you or to buy from you or do anything if you're not actively participating in it and, you know, doing the things that you're yep. preaching about. And then at that point, you can teach others. Oh, perfect. Most most people learn, teach, and never do, to be exactly. honest. There was, don't get me wrong. That step, it's huge. <laughs> don't get me wrong. Teaching is a doing, right? Teaching is, it's a fantastic way to build confidence, to gain a skill set. But there's just sometimes a, a challenge about people that maybe charge a fee for a teach if they've never done. Okay. Yeah. And I find people will, you know... They'll believe in you more and they'll trust you more if you're actively doing what you're teaching. Yep. Because it proves, you know, if you're if you're selling a, a weight loss supplement, but you you don't even go to the gym or you know you're not an active person, it's not really believable. But if you're actively doing the things that you're preaching about, then I just find that you build that trust with your your followers and your audience and everything like that. And it just makes it a lot easier and and more profitable for you I in the end. 100% agree. Okay. Now I have two lining, two lines of question that I do want to go down here. So this one is, um, a little bit around uh, how the heck do you guys fit all this in? You're, you both have full-time jobs. You have a growing portfolio, real estate, Jess, you're now doing a, a you know, in, in essence, a startup on uh, an internet marketing side hustle on, you have a side hustle on top of your other side hustles. By the way. <laughs> Um, and you have a, a very active family. Your your kids are in all the activities. You guys go hiking out to the mountains all the time. You want to do some travel and stuff like that. How do you kind of fit all this stuff in? Prioritize. Yeah. Unpack that for me. How do you? How, what what do you do? Um, well, we we do what's important to us, and as Dan kind of touched on earlier, you know, our family is number one. So we we try and fit other things around our our kids and our schedules. So we both work full time. Um, we have all these side hustles that we're doing. Um, you know, we get up early, we're 5 AMers and we do things when our kids are in sports or, um, we stay up later than, you know, maybe the average, but we, we find the time for what's important to us and we, we make it a priority. Yeah. And, uh, just to go off that too, like we do, we try to stay very disciplined, I think is probably the biggest thing for us um we're putting off a lot of the extra luxuries that we don't do now to do later on in life like some of the extra traveling that's why we're trying to build these sources of income and these business streams um is is for that right because we we do want to be parents first to our kids yeah um but we also want to teach them the ways of you know not so common stuff of how to run a business how to do this the power of real estate the power of investing when your 5 year old talks about um if we're going to the rental today yeah <laughs> and asks someone casually in Costco hey do you guys do you guys have a rental like my parents <laughs> yeah it, so you know. <laughs> So to put it all in, it's not so hard when you enjoy what you're doing, right? Like we, we get up, you know, you're driven for it. We have, we try to stay on track with some goals. So like, what are we working towards? Do we have anything we want to hit this week? Do we, we prioritize, um, in the calendar, right? So we put everything in there <laughs> and we also put the important stuff to us in the calendar. So like, if I'm going to go to the gym, I throw that in the calendar so that we know like nothing else is booked. I'm doing some time there. I'll take the kids to the pool there and then we'll come home at night. Kids go to bed and, you know, instead of sitting down and watching TV for three hours, you know, you're reading a, you're reading a book or you're doing some research online or you're creating a program. It's and just social media doing not scrolling, but actually, you know, doing, doing the things. So. Yeah. You just, prioritize that and it, it comes out to what you want and it takes discipline i think is the biggest thing to to prioritize that nice nice it's funny how when, whenever i ask that question the typical answer of the high performing people is so how do you fit all this stuff in and their their answer is um well it's just our life we live our life and we have our priorities and this is just what we do every day like what do you mean fit it in it's just we we live our life and we love what we do right it's like there's no there's no magic formula is there no no and honestly, too, on that is like, I always believe too, if you want to get something done, give it to a busy person because they're working on it. They have contacts. They know what they're doing that, you know, they'll get it done. Yeah. 
And and the big thing that I, I I took away from what you just said there was you know your priorities and you always you will never compromise on your priority. Your priority is your family. Now yeah. what you will do on top of that is you will find a way to involve your family in everything you do. So so brilliant. You guys are you guys are absolutely just crushing it out there. I'm very proud of you guys. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank that you. means a lot. Yeah. And now next thing I want to do is let me just uh, jump over. Let's, I don't think I got here. Let's see if I go. Uh, Jessica, what's this new business venture that you kind of got on the go? This Affiliates by Jay. Like I tell you, if you go into your Facebook page, you have you have some of the best, you know, Facebook uh, posts and things like that, too. Talk to me a little bit about this, what you're doing on on your, your side hustle on top of your other two side hustles. <laughs> Yeah. Um, well, thank you for that. Um, so what I've done is I've kind of partnered with a few different people and um, it's through affiliate marketing. So um, some of it has master resale rights attached and it really just gives you an entrepreneurial lesson in business and it gives you the fundamentals. Um, and ultimately it'll teach you how to create your own course and present that to other people. Yeah. So, so essentially you're, you're, you're developing sales skills in many respects and something that you need to do and help sell things and provide a service, provide a valuable service for others. And you learn the whole world of, of sales and marketing, which in my opinion and is, my main goal yeah. is, um, very entrapped is to, is to provide busy parents, people, you know, that are working parents who, um, just really want to have that extra time at home with their families, um, and have that as a priority. I want to make that so the financial aspect isn't a stress anymore. I want to be able to teach people how to make multiple streams of income. I make Airbnb priority. I make my affiliate marketing a priority, um, and do all those things so you can have that time with your families. Oh, good for you! Now, and and I know when when the couch was being delivered, we had a little conversation sidebar. We should have kept the recording going and, and things like that. <laughs> <I> we, <laughs> But but at the same time, and, and I'll just give you, and I'm not trying to, you know, as I mentioned, I'm not trying to give you all just all this compliments and stuff, but you guys are doing a good job. And not only a good job, I would I would dare to say you're doing a great job. It's bordering on like really high end quality materials. How do you uh, how do you feel about when you're putting out those videos on a, on multiple a day and you're sitting there going, who wants to watch me point at things and music right? and stuff like, <laughs> like, how do you, how do you, how do you keep doing that? And you do a really good job with it, by the way. Thank you. It's, I find it's, um, I just have to get out of my comfort zone. You know, I'm not a super outgoing person, but you kind of, you kind of have to be and just getting out of that comfort zone and really just being consistent and posting every day, even maybe, you know, when you don't really feel like it. So to show up and be consistent and provide value, I think that's huge. People aren't going to just watch you um, pointing to things and, you know, doing all this stuff. You want to provide them with something that they can find useful and they can learn from you. And that's how you're going to have those people who become your followers and and are invested in what you have to say. Yeah, good for you. Now, now I know somebody sitting off to your off your left shoulder there that probably you can rub off on a little bit. <laughs> I think I am I, am I doing it the right way? Um, I I don't have social media. Ah, uh, Dan, I don't know how don't. many times I told when we were working together and you guys had to put together a little presentation to me and you had to sell me on a potential yeah. investment opportunity. I sit there and go, I go, you guys got the chops. Like, Dan, you're, you're, you're really underselling how good you are at this. And, and I get it. I totally understand that our insecurities bubble up when stuff like that. But, but uh, yeah. you have an incredible role model off to your side there. Just uh, follow, <laughs> follow, follow what she does, by the way. Well, on that note, too, like, yeah, I'm very impressed in what she's been doing because it's, it's opened up a whole other side of what that world is. And if it's you're not, problem. If you're not a part of it, like you just don't realize the the power behind it. It's it's insane. It's it's cool. And I've I've enjoyed um because Jess has taught me quite a bit. So I've I've really enjoyed that. And and the potential to that side is is awesome. And it kind of correlates with everything that we're doing um to begin with. So maybe maybe one day I'll make a guest appearance on there, Russ. <laughs> well, do you do do you do any of the videoing or anything like that? Or are you the camera person or nothing? You, nothing. nothing. <laughs> I've told he Jess does so to, much other stuff yeah. though. <laughs> yeah. I've told Jess it's important to get a system in place and automate it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's all. No, no, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to force you to do anything, but uh, uh, you know, 
it, it's amazing on what can happen when you lean into the process and you focus on the process and you deliver the value and you have a you have a vision of what you want to accomplish. It's amazing what can happen over a short period of time. Yeah, and um, even like I, I after kind of speaking with you, um, I actually worked up a little bit of courage and started that short term rental um, uh, Airbnb page, and it's generated a substantial amount of interest. And it's just really nice, you know, to have that audience and that following and you can share things that are working, share things that aren't working and just kind of give people an insight as to what we're doing and and how it's working for us and how it can possibly work for you too. That's awesome. Now, I know if we were sitting here and we're having this conversation, you're you're typical Canadian, humble Canadians and, you know, you would be just in there, well, we're just getting started. And, And in some cases you are, but in some cases you're a long ways down the road. You really are. And you've accomplished a lot already and you have a lot more to accomplish. What's the next chapter? What's the next chapter you guys are writing in your book? Well, it's uh, I, I'm, like you said, I'm really trying to get off the ground with the affiliate marketing. And um, I'd really like to see ourselves, you know, creating some kind of Airbnb um, guidelines. I've already kind of started a little bit on Amazon even and providing, you know, a list of um, like an Airbnb startup list. So people can go there and you get basically a full guide of everything that you're going to need room by room for your property. So kind of to take that to the next level, I think would be huge. Um, and then again, just to keep working with some, you know, busy, busy parents, amazing parents and trying to get us all into this kind of next level where we can really step up our game. Nice. Nice. Bam. The real estate, we have some goals too. Yeah. So we do like we do follow um, our goals. We write them down and kind of go through them annually at the same time. but. On real estate ends, I meet with um, a close buddy of mine in town and we kind of chat real estate, you know, every month and talk about it, kind of make some plans, see where everything's going because he's heavily involved yeah. too. I think I'd, well, I know our next step would be to look at a multifamily unit, go out of the suite um, to a fourplex, eightplex. The ultimate goal would be some type of an apartment um, inside. Doesn't have to be Lethbridge, but that would be the end goal for multifamily. The next thing too, I would really like to do um, an Airbnb at a resort town, Mm -hmm. Uh, not a seasonal resort town, but one that has all seasons. So like there's a lake for summer, there's golfing for summers. And then there's also a ski or snowboard town for that, for the winter off season as well. Which Um, being in um, Southern Alberta, we have lots of places nearby that, you know, wouldn't be um, an airplane ride to get there. It'd be just kind of a short drive because we're in a great location for those kind of all season yeah. properties. And we're looking to, um, we chat quite a bit about uh, the Whitefish area, which is actually in the in the US um, for that because they have, they're all all season with lots of stuff. And um, so we, we chat about that. I think that would be on our radar going forward. And then, yeah, that's kind of our, our real estate. And then we have personal goals too, right? I, I, I'm a firm believer in, you know, cleaning up your own house first. So taking care of yourself, putting your priorities on that. And when you're healthy, everything else kind of follows suit. So that's, that's a really large part of our life that um, helps us succeed too. Nice. Awesome. And, and I know for a fact, just been working with you guys, you will, you're going to accomplish everything you put your mind to. You just have the right attitude. You're just, you just, um, you have the right perspective. You're, you know, it's, you also have the right belief. It's not going to be easy and you're willing to do the work and you're willing to put the process in and you're willing to, to make the investment and you're willing to be humble and learn more and you're willing to just do whatever it takes ethically and legally that re- required to make it happen. Aren't you? Yeah. And uh, we enjoy the work, which is. That's huge. Yeah. Even you got better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, somebody told me that it's a true sense of a professional is somebody that can enjoy the monotonous. If you can, if you literally can enjoy the absolute monotony of something, that is what it takes to be successful long term. Yeah. Everyone wants to be, you know, a real estate investor or something, but they don't see the hours and hours that go in, you know, to successfully yeah. do it beforehand. Yeah. Respect the grind, right? Respect the grind. <laughs> um, if some, so go ahead. If, if somebody wanted to get hold of you, what would be the best place to get hold of you first before I go? Um, well, you can reach not, out not on me. social media. <laughs> Myself, <laughs> not to Dan. Yeah. <laughs> so my um, Airbnb um, page that I have is called STR, so short-term rental, tips for success. 
And okay. uh, that would probably be the number one place to get a hold of me there, or even on my personal Facebook, um, Jessica Chisholm, or um, on my affiliate, mar- affiliate marketing side, which is, as you mentioned before, Affiliates by Jay. Okay. So if they just kind of look up your name on Facebook, that probably can be that as a good place to start with with everything for you. Yep. Okay. Awesome. Absolutely. Awesome. I didn't mean to jump over you there, Dan. What, was, uh, what were you about to just say? I just had this written down too as one of our primary goals is actually... We're researching quite heavily something called the Smith Maneuver. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with that, Russ. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. Yeah. So that's actually a strategy that we, we've we kind of been starting to implement um, into yeah. our primary residence. So that that's going to be on the, the horizon for us too, to kind of push that into effect and start working um, into that, which is a pretty cool concept. Uh, I still have to work my way through that full book, but uh, it's something Jess and I are both on board for that we're going to give it a shot. Yep. my uh, I 100% believe it. I think it's a fantastic, it's one of those ones. It's a, it's a wonderful, don't think about a program that you can do it. My attitude has always been, um, why don't we just go out, make a whole pile, a boatload of money and just pay off properties free and clear over time. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that works too, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> and then I know in some circles, uh, free and clear properties, no mortgage free on some places, that's a swear word. But I'll tell you, it would be really nice to have a free and clear principal residence right about now when your after tax money is going to your principal residence and interest rates have gone up. So I would have yeah. a feeling a lot of people would be okay having a free and clear principal residence right now. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. Um, it's funny you say that too, because this was, uh, First time I listened to you on the podcast was one of the, I think the core principles you were talking about was buy three rentals, keep them for X amount of years, sell two, pay off one, and you have, you know, a free and clear house and then repeat the process. And I was like, oh man, it's a great idea. Yep. And with, with, and here's the thing would, so you have three, you have three free, you have three suited houses right now. You potentially yeah. over time, depending on how market conditions can be, you potentially, then let's just do it. Let's do it, the math. Let's say you had three and let's say over the next five years, you let's say you bought no more, which I know you're not going to, you're going to grow and scale. And let's say you sold off two of them and you pay, had enough in those two sales to pay one off free and clear. And if you're generating $5,000 a month on that, you know, let's say there's an expense ratio that potentially could be upwards of $4,000 free and clear cash flow for you. 4,000 a month times 12. What is that? 96 grand. Is that right? Yeah. Probably. <laughs> Your math is probably. Better. Sorry, 40, 48 grand. That's 48,000. That's a $50,000 a year income stream. Yeah. By just having that one place. Okay. Yeah. So now you add two, you're at a hundred thousand dollar a year income stream. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. That's a pretty good retirement package, right? That like, right there is is a pension plan that will outlive you. Yeah. yeah. Right. Brilliant. Brilliant. Uh, and I'm not saying brilliant because that's what I, <laughs> I thought of, but it's brilliant in what you guys are doing, right? It, it was brilliant because that's what kind of got us going into it. And that's why we jumped into the three properties. Yep. It's when you word it that way too, it, it, it just, yeah, it's like, yeah, that's a great idea. Um, let's start implementing that. Yep. Cool. Very, very cool. And then, and then, you know, all the Jess's affiliate income that's going to be coming in, that'll just be, that'll be the travel fund for the year to take, uh, take travel all the time. Right. Yep. Definitely. <laughs> nice. Nice. All right. So last question I always leave off with people here and uh, we can go whatever direction you like with this one. It's, um, so let's just say we're, we're having a cup of coffee and you're having a cup of coffee and I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm feeling a little stuck. Just, just not sure what to do. Like I'm, I've been just bumping up against things and interest rates and looks like, I, you know, I've been on Twitter or, or X and it just looks like everything's going down quite fast and I just need a little bit of help getting unstuck. What advice would you give me? My, well, my advice would be to follow people that you want to be like. So I find in, um, you know, my field, I, you can kind of look at what other people are doing and reinvent it for yourself. So if something's working, that means they're doing something right. So if you can find a way to make that process your own, I think that's a good stepping stone um, to success. Yeah. And for me, I would, I would tell you, you know, get your house in order. Like I said earlier, start with yourself, start with the basics, um, do something in that's like athletic, go to the gym, get pumping, get going. It's going to make you feel better. Mm -hmm. And then 
don't focus on the things you can't change. So you can't change interest rates. You can't do any of this stuff. Focus on what you can change and start there. And it's going to get you out of that rut. And then honestly, listen to some podcasts or something that you People like you. <laughs> yeah, need to get you going. And but if you clean up your house first, take care of yourself, it'll get you out of those nice those little. So like, find people. find a good community, find somebody to inspire you, clean up your own house, and control the controllables. How about that for a summary? Wow, you guys are brilliant. You guys are absolutely rock star, gold star. Hang on, I've been really remiss and bringing all the fire that you guys have been just i've been so engaged in the conversation i've been failing to bring all the bombs and the fire that you guys are doing um <laughs> I, I truly see amazing upside potential from you guys and i one of the things i like doing is i like telling the stories over time okay um you guys are 100 percent. you have an open invitation to come back in a year or two from now whatever you feel comfortable with and I want to share your story again of what's happened since the last time we talked, because I think it's kind of, I, I get a kick out of following people's progressions and following people's progressions upward of people that are high performers and high achievers. And you guys have that, um, you know, you have an abundance in that going forward. So you up for another episode? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Thank you very much yeah. for having us. Oh, happy to help. All right, everybody, if you know, you know the drill, like, share, and share out this message. If something that Dan and Jessica shared with you that really resonated, by all means, please reach out to them and give them a high five and tell them the amazing job that they're doing. Okay, gang, bye for now. You're obviously somebody who takes action if you've made it right to the end of this video. So you should be rewarded with a couple extra bonuses and goodies. Number one, make sure you subscribe. There will be a button below here to subscribe so you don't miss an upcoming video. And over here, to continue your journey going forward, there'll be a hand-selected playlist and a hand-selected video, just perfect for what you're looking for. All right, gang, continue the momentum. Let's go!